Time for a tool video. Let's get to it. Up first from Gear Wrench, we got a 10 piece metric stubby flex head ratcheting wrench set. This is going to be model 9550. Uh, this one's made in Taiwan. Uh, where's our specs here? 72 teeth, so it's going to have a 5 degree swing. Of course, they're stubbies. The flex head is going to go 180 degrees, and it's got design features to prevent rounding of fasteners. Of course, this is a, the 12 point version. The sizes are 10 all the way through 19, and we don't skip any sizes. Here they are out of the box. It appears that we have every size that we're supposed to. Gear wrench has always made pretty decent tools, especially when it comes to their ratcheting wrenches. I mean, heck, that's where they got their name from. The sizes are stamped in. The flex head right there, it's nice and stiff. So if you put it in a position and you need it to stay there, it's going to stay there, which is nice. It always sucks when they start getting real floppy. And these are pretty compact. For being flex head, they're definitely fairly compact. I mean, there's your uh, 10 millimeter there. Comparing it to, let's see, this one's a 12 millimeter just kind of a regular gear wrench and there's pretty close to the same right there and let's see here's a what is this a 19 put the 19 right over the top and they're almost exactly the same so that's nice they didn't make them too big you know when you want a, a stubby wrench you need it to be stubby here's a 17 here's the regular stubby wrenches so non ratcheting same thing almost exactly the same size. What do we got here? A 10? Oh, here's a 10. Same size on their normal wrench. So I've been happy using gear wrench. I pretty much use them exclusively when it comes to wrenches and uh, sockets. And uh, plan on putting these to use. I always like to add tools like this to a collection. Let's see what we got next. Up next from SunX, we have a 25 piece 3 8 inch impact socket set. This is going to be SAE version. And model number 3325, where's this made? Made in Taiwan. And what do we get? Looks like we get standard and deep, 5 sixteenths all the way up to 1 inch. It looks like we get them both in standard and deep. So let's get this thing open. There it is, out of the packaging. This is actually a pretty nice case. Nice latches. Actually feels pretty decent. You could probably keep them in here, although looks like they move around though. Not too bad, but they do move around. You might have to like set a piece of cardboard in there if you didn't want to keep them moving. I've done that before. Just kind of tape a piece of cardboard in there that puts enough pressure they don't ever move. You can flip them all around. If you want to keep them in the case, typically I, I take these out of the cases. Um, but let's see, we get 5 sixteenths in shallow and deep all the way up to 15 sixteenths. And then it looks like these are our 1 inch sizes. We have a universal swivel socket we can use on any of them. I pretty much use SunX Impacts exclusively. That's typically all I use. And I pretty much grab, you know, because I work on Hondas a lot, I grab the 3 8 inch version. Sometimes I come across fasteners that are not metric, and so that's why I wanted to have the SAE version. But I really like Sunex sockets. Haven't had any problem with their impacts, and that's why I ended up buying this set, and I don't think I'll have any problem with these too. So anyway, what's next? Up next from Swan Lake, we got a 166-piece thread repair kit. This is going to be the metric version. Model 66024. And let's see, where was it made? made in China and it comes with uh, M5, 6, 8, 10 and 12 so let's get it open there it is out of the box comes in this nice little metal case actually pretty nice you just pop it open there we go instructions ain't nobody got time for that and there's our setup so the different sizes M5 times 0.8 M6 times 1 M8 times 1.25, M10 times 1.5, M12 times 1.75. And for each of the sizes, we get pretty much what we need. You got the drill bit, the tap, you got the install tool, 
and the tang breaker, whatever you want to call it, thing the little break the tang, tang off, plus all the inserts, and we get quite a few of each size. And so, you know, if you're repairing an engine, I'll be working on an engine that overheated, and I have a sneaking suspicion that every bolt or a lot of the bolts I touch when I pull them out they're gonna pull all the aluminum threads right with it and so if that's the case I'm gonna grab this set and repair them and see how it works um, this car is probably not long for the junkyard and so this is a great way to test it out without using it on my own vehicle <laughs> but no even if I had to I would use it on my own vehicle but this kit is obviously a, a lot cheaper than some of the big names that you can find um, and it gives you a lot of different sizes that you're going to encounter on a vehicle. So we'll see if we can't put this to use in a video one of these days. Up next, we got some gear ties. These are made by Night Eyes. Uh, where's the model number? Uh, I don't know, but these are the 24 inch ones. And it comes with two of them. I got a couple packs. I'll just show you the one pack. Uh, I just saw it. Where is it made? Made in the USA right there. And it has, well, let me get out of the packaging. It's probably your part number right there. There they are. Like I said, these are the 24 inch version. They have a wire in there and then it's coated with rubber. And then it has a little tip on the end and we can just bend it around and tie stuff up. These are great for working in the engine bay and you got a wiring harness or something or hoses and we need to hold them up out of our way. Just wrap this around and wrap it around something else. We don't have to worry about anything metal marring it or anything. I mean, you can bend them in just about whatever shape you want. If you had something really long, I mean, we could tie a couple of these together if we needed to and, and go to town. Of course, I didn't do it right, but these things definitely work great under the engine. And they have different colors. I got the orange, so they won't get lost. I won't accidentally forget them under there. Easy to see. Of course, they're going to get all brown and nasty once we start using them, but definitely you know when you don't have room for a uh, you know something like this to hold things out of the way especially you don't want metal maybe scratching that's where something like this really comes in handy where we can just wrap it around and we don't have to worry about it marring up anything so these are definitely handy to have and it's nice to see that they're made in the USA up next from depths tech we got a professional endoscope this one is going to be the uh, DS500 model. And let's see, where is it made? Made in China. It's got the 5 inch LCD camera and it's got a really long cable. This is like 16 and a half feet, so it's great. I mean, you can put it across the shop and check things out. Uh, yeah, it's waterproof to IP67. Um, but what's nice about this one, it has dual cameras. So not only will it look you know straight out like that it'll also look at a 90 degree and that's why I bought it so let's get it out it comes in this nice little carrying case with a zipper where's the zipper at? we get it opened up and there's our camera we got instructions there nobody got time for that stuff and what do we got oh it's held on there but there's our main little camera unit like that and there's our big long length of cable looks like we have some attachments that we can put on the end of it and our charging cable it doesn't look like it comes with an actual charger but it comes with the cable and it's a USB-C whoa look at our main unit there's a TF card is that what that is so there's a TF card already installed and there's our charging port and a reset button right there it looks like that's rubberized we can set that back down that looks like it plugs in right there so let me get it connected and we'll fire it up as long as we don't have to charge it first and it just screws on there nice and secure so it won't pop off and then like I said we got lots of lead lots of cable we can go different places it sucks when it's too short I've tried other versions of this in fact I have another one that it's similar but the quality is terrible it's not HD. This should be 1080. Um, and my other camera is definitely not too, uh, 1080. It's more like 280. Um, so it's terrible. And it's got a kind of a short little uh, cable. That's why I really like this one. It's longer. But obviously the big feature on this one is the two cameras. Having the ability to look to the side as you 
put the camera down into something really tight like a cylinder or something like that that is where this really shines and I don't like um, versions of these endoscopes that plug into your phone. I don't want anything attached to my phone. When I'm out working in the garage I want my tools to do the work and my phone to do calls and stuff like that. And then you know when I'm away from work I use my phone to do calls and stuff like that. So I like to keep them separate um, and so and I tried one time using my phone with one of these and it just didn't work out. I ended up sending it back. So. This one, being a standalone unit, should work a lot better. Let me get it fired up. Well, that's a pretty darn nice view right there, I tell you. That's great. And then I think if we hit that button, oh, it flips it. And I think if we hold it, there it went to the side camera over there. There's my finger right there. So now we're, we're aimed that way, but looking over there. Now this is supposed to be up close. This is definitely a close-up camera, this one on the side. It's not made to look at things way back. It definitely won't have the capability to do that. If we hold it again, I think it'll do a split screen. Yeah, so here yeah, we got a split screen like that so we can watch both of them. And then we hold it again and it just goes back to our first one so this one you can see stuff a little bit further away and you can see stuff up close like that but the other the other one where we're using the side camera that's pretty much you're gonna be up close like that but that's definitely a very handy tool when you're going down into a small area to be able to see you know both straight ahead and off at a 90 degree angle like that that, that's a pretty darn nice picture. That's not bad at all. For dark areas, we have a light right there. So we can adjust the light up or down right here. Or turn it all the way off. There's actually a light on the front. If I pull the trigger, we have a light on the front of the tool also, in case we need that. And we can either take a picture or take video of whatever's on here whatever we're seeing through the camera we can just take a picture of it we can take video which is kinda nice that's definitely a neat feature right there well that's all the tools for today and as always if the video helped you out or you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up thanks for watching